Hi, I'm Arthur N.D. Jones. Today's blog talk is about N.D. Jones. So I have four questions that I will answer and hopefully will uh, give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about me. So I have the four questions written here on my index card. The first question is, tell me something about yourself, how you became an author. So to answer that question, it goes back perhaps six or seven years. During that time, Marvel introduced Storm and Black Panther as a couple. My husband actually told me, he said, hey, did you know that Marvel was putting together Storm of the X-Men with King T'Challa of the Black Panther franchise? And I was like, uh, no. That sounds absolutely awesome and cool. So I jumped on that bandwagon and that was really my first time reading comics. Now I've always like, you know, cartoons, watched the, um, the X-Men in the cartoons. So I was very familiar with both Storm, mainly Storm more so than the Black Panther, but I also knew he was as well. I knew some of the history and lore, but I actually never read any of the Black Panther comics and so Reginald Hutland was brought on to write about this huge power couple and it was a mega shift in the universe as far as Marvel because up until that time we really didn't have hardly any African or African American couples definitely not at the popularity level of Black Panther and Storm. So it was truly unprecedented for Marvel to put together these huge, iconic, popular heroes and in a romantic way at that. And so I was all on board with that. So as a result, I started, you know, reading fan fiction. I never read fan fiction before, but most importantly, as it starts to answer the question of how I became involved or how I became an author is I started writing fan fiction. And it was because of my love of these characters. It was because of my love of seeing them with their unique power sets, the stories written around them, but also the love of these characters. And for once, really seeing that, what I like to call black love, being played out on a really big scale through the Black Panther comics with these two characters because it's just simply not enough of that. Not in television, not in movies, not in comics, and not even in novels. So that's really how I started. I started down a path of writing fan fiction based on what I saw as a dearth of stories and types of characters out there. But what happened was I was spending a lot of time writing characters I didn't own with stories that I actually did create. And so the question became, why wouldn't I spend that time with characters that I created and stories that I really wanted to tell and stories that I own? So I made that transition from loving comics, loving the love between Black Panther and Storm and wanting to replicate that experience for me, loving seeing couples that look like me, that look like my husband and the type of couple that that we are. And then of course, giving, giving them these wonderful powers. And so I started pinning those types of reads, paranormal, fantasy, as you see behind me, the Wing Warriors series, and that was my first published work. Fire Fairy Faith, Issa, and Sarah, those were my first characters, and, and I gave them wings, I made them angels, and they were chosen angels at that mean they started from, they started off as humans, and they were elevated to this angelic plane. So they were, um, God asked them, we birth for angelic service and they chose angelic service. And those were my first cover, couples. Those were my first characters in my published work. And so 
here I am, I think, maybe eight years later, and finishing up this series. But between the first um, book, Fire Fairy Faith, with that paranormal romance, again with Issa and Sarah, I've written over a dozen stories with characters that, that hopefully when people read will have that same feeling that I had when I picked up a comic and I saw Black Panther and Storm in there with being their wonderful, powerful selves, but also being in love with each other. So that, that's my journey from comic book and fan fiction to, um, to an author. The second question, what are your pet peeves? And this is a cute question for me because I have actually a lot of pet peeves. I won't bore you with all of them. I'll just limit it to a couple. And the one that just pops in my head is uh, I have a lot of issues with people in their questionable driving. But I live on the street and it's a one-way street. And what happens is that it's a short street and people invariably, for whatever reason, and I don't have an answer um, as to why they do it, but they just feel a need to drive down our one-way street. Now, as I'm recording this, we're in the midst of this COVID-19. So unless you are essential personnel, and I am not, I've, this, I've been home for two weeks. All the school systems in my state are, are closed. All huge businesses, they're also closed. And I'm sure you're probably experiencing the same. And so what I've been trying to do and, and trying to be very disciplined about it is to at least get out and get some exercise and walk around the neighborhood every couple of days, trying to maintain the social distancing. But you know, you need to stretch your legs, you need to um, have that fresh air. So that's what I did a couple of days ago. I walked around the neighborhood, had my headphones on, listening to a story. I turned right onto my block on my way home, and there was a car coming down the street. Again, a one-way street. That's one of my pet peeves right there. A second pet peeve is just honestly rude and impolite people. And I know we've all had someone enter our lives and oftentimes more than just a in single individual who we believe are rude and impolite. And if we're really honest with ourselves, including myself, sometimes we are that rude or impolite person. But that's one of my pet peeves. I, I do think that we can be try to be nicer to each other. And we see a lot of that coming out again with this pandemic and we are rallying around each other and helping each other. And we definitely need more of that and not just during times of crisis. So those are two of my pet peeves. Question three, how to find time to write as a parent? And that can be tough. And I will tell you again, I started writing professionally about eight years ago and my children were in, one was in starting high school, one was in middle school and their ages and their level of independence at that point made it a lot easier for me to find time as a working parent and as an author. So basically what I would do, just pick the kids up from school, come home, they would eat dinner, and we would sit down at the table. They would do their homework and I sit on the other side of the table and I have my time and I'm writing a chapter, I'm editing, but I'm also monitoring them. So I've been very fortunate that my children are just at an age in which I didn't have to sit right next to them when they are doing their homework, which is what I did when they were a lot younger. And so we can all sit together as a family and everyone is working on their independent work. So it's like kind of spending quality time together, but we're all in the same space, but we're independent and it's just great. And so I've been able to work like that. And even though my daughter, she's now a senior in high school, it's the same thing. She comes home, she takes a rest. I do the same thing. And we, we sit down at the dining room table and we share the same space, not work. So 
the fact that my children are very independent and that we have this routine that's definitely helped me to engage in my writing but also still be right there and be an active parent. So that's the third question. And then the fourth and final question is, which of your novels can you imagine leading to a movie? I love that because I love movies. It's one of my favorite pastimes. And honestly, the fact that I write both paranormal and fantasy, I think any of the books I've written would do well, would transition well into a movie. I think especially in this age of Marvel in Disney and in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we just went through an entire decade of Marvel movies. And I don't think anyone before that could have predicted how huge that particular genre would have become, that people will spend billions and billions of dollars to see these movies. And so now we have, we're moving into a different phase and it's just blown up. So I think there is a lot of opportunity for authors like me to have the books that we write be acceptable to a large swath of the viewing, movie viewing, movie going, Netflix viewing population of people. These wing warriors with angels, I think, will make an excellent uh, movie. It's enough magic and action and love. That's important, at least to me, when you when you read and people to root for on a lot of different levels. So I believe that any of my books would transition well into a movie. So those are my four um, about N.D. Jones questions that I answered in today's blog talk. Please be safe out there. Practice social distancing. Take care of yourself, but also make good decisions so you can help take care of other people. Be safe. And until next time, goodbye.